All right, guys, this is what we're doing. This is our project. We're starting it today. It's Tuesday. Um, yesterday we took off. It was Memorial Day. We got to dig a 32 by 32 um, crawl space foundation. Actually, I'm wrong on that. Because we got to add the three feet for the width, you know what I mean? The dig. The dig. Yeah, that's what we want. Five feet in on each side. That should be, uh, and then you should be, you should be 38 between those paint lines. Give it a quick check. Make sure you're 38 between those paint lines. This first one, yeah, the, yeah, you could scuff that other one right out. You got 38, Jay? Okay, that's what we want basically. So we're gonna over dig this thing by three feet all the way around it, guys. That's the game plan. Um, I'm gonna paint some lines on the ground. I got the mini over here, the Anmar, and I got Kevin the Kubota. And this is the blueprint. It's real basic, it's just a crawl space for like a camp foundation. I believe it's a camp or a small house. This is the plans right here so it's just 32 by 32 we're gonna go down in about four feet down in the ground we're gonna have a 10 inch footer 10 by 20 footer and uh, we were gonna use concrete blocks but I think I want to use ICF because we're our schedule is so tight we got so much work lined up I think it would be more cost effective labor wise to do ICF for me anyways. So I'm gonna run that by the homeowner. I'm sure they won't be too worried about that. They do have to insulate the crawl space I noticed on the blueprint. So if we go ICF, it's gonna eliminate that needing that um, insulation. So that's a cost savings that we can take off. I would, not that, I would mark this line right here. Oh, okay. They should be 32. I think. Yeah. 32? Okay. Right at 32. Yeah, we so. Go three feet farther. Yeah. We want to go 38. We're just trying to get established where we want to dig here and paint some lines. So stay with us. Um, we're going to have a quite a dirt pile here. I was going to try to get my uh, excavator to dig this, but he's too busy. So. We're going to have to dig it with the small machine. It's not a big hole, but it's going to, there's still going to be a lot of dirt, but we'll take uh, Kevin the Kubota and move the dirt out of the way. That's the game plan. Been doing a little digging today. Biscuit's got some Sammies for everyone. Break time. Okay guys, this is where we're at this morning. I ran and got a load of stone with uh, Clifford and the boys got the outside form on. They're building the inside form right now. Obviously we got it dug yesterday, which took all day to dig it with my little mini, but we got her. We went three feet bigger around it. So we got some room to work and that's it i'm running stone today these guys are getting that we're gonna try to pour it today so me and cliff are gonna go get another load of stone and when i get back i gotta dig out that bilco door there's a bilco door over there i gotta dig that out and they're gonna get these footers built get our spreader boards on there get our rebar in and we're gonna call circle t today and try to get some concrete so that's what we're up to stay tuned
Okay guys, this is where we're at. We are waiting on mud. It is 1.30 in the afternoon. Uh, everything's ready to roll. We got, uh, we've got some barrels that we cut down for our pads in the middle. Um, we got um, everything staked up, ready to go. Rebar's in there. Mud's on its way. We're figuring this is gonna take about 11 yards of concrete. Um, I dug along here, I dug along there, and I can get most of this with the excavator. I got the big ditching bucket on there. Should be able to just fill up the ditching bucket, slide along here and dump it right in. We got a couple of rent woods here too, um, if we need them. We could probably use them too, fill them up too. But uh, we're in good shape today. I got ended up getting three loads of stone over there. so. We got uh, two rebars in our footer, bent around the corners. Uh, the footer's 10 inches thick, 24 inches wide, which is extra wide. Doesn't need to be that wide, but we make them a little wider than normal being on this uh, clay dirt. So we're ready to rip. We got our Bilco door um, pad back there, and we're gonna get placing some concrete just here in a minute. Um, Jade's coming from Circle T with a front loader, and that's how we're going to do it. Stay with us. Here comes the mod 154. And it, they were supposed to be here at 2, so they are early. Here comes Jade. We got a cone out in the road for her. Let's get put a cone out there. We're going to bring her right in, straight in. We're going to load that bucket of that excavator, first of all try to use that where we can and then we'll use the Brentwoods like I said earlier. Come right in Jade. I think so. Shit. I did? Yeah. You jumped it Really? No, I didn't even notice. Oh it is a tight turn. Yeah she might have her little trouble. We might have to move Clifford, the red dog. Help her out. She comes straight in. I have to move that rock with the with the skits or uh, with the excavator if I got to. No, nope. why she just just clearing. Woo. Have her back up a little. Yeah, it's soft in front of that dump truck. Front of her truck just sank. Ooh, that ain't good. I better move Clifford in. She's locking in. Just enough room to get that damn truck in here. Oh yeah. There we go. She got it. I'd stay on the stone if I was her. Hmm gets off the stone we'll be pulling her out and that ain't what we want to do today two we'll oh two chevys one ford will take up for two chevys mm -hmm. all right dustin yeah. at one ford oh boy all right i'm gonna put you on a tripod guys try to time lapse this
Hey guys, this is what she looks like. Just finishing up. Um, we had a little extra concrete, so we just put her right in there, flattened it out. Um, it's just gonna be less stone we gotta put in the middle because this gets filled up with stone right to the top of the footer. So everything will drain. But there we go. I'm just pounding in the rebars. Put the rebars, tons of rebar in this thing. We got our uh, buckets filled up with concrete too. They're all set to grade with the laser. We can uh, just cut the tops off tomorrow with a sawzall. And that's it. Dustin's cleaning everything up. And uh, we're gonna head out of here pretty soon. Had a good day. Had a real good day. We dug this yesterday, so we are moving right along. All right, guys, I'm up in the back of Clifford. I just brought over some pipe some Marify paper and uh, I'm gonna run and get some more stone the boys are gonna be here to strip off them footers and uh, we're gonna start getting some stone in the middle and uh, putting our perimeter drain around it and today is uh, Thursday so we're gonna try to pour the floor tomorrow so that's the game plan but I gotta go get some stone right now so I found the place to get stone a lot closer to the job so I'm pulling into their pit here looks like they got a big processor right there that they make stone looks like they got topsoil and everything here so I am uh, gonna I called the guy yesterday but I don't know where to go but I'm gonna get in here and talk to somebody looking to get some uh, number two stone number two crushed probably Two stone. I talked to the guy in the loader, and there's their two stone. They're crushed two stone. This place is huge. Got a big pond in here. Tons of topsoil. The pond is gigantic. Where they've been taking material out for probably for years. We're gonna grab that two stone. Put it on Clifford. This place is way closer. This is like nine minutes from uh, the job site, so gonna save a ton of time and fuel getting material from here. This was Big Biscuit's ID. He said to call call this guy and get my material. So I don't know where the loader is, but it's a big loader. Oh, he's doing topsoil right now. Dump it in. six yards so you get sixteen dollars a yard for this Yesterday was too wet, that's why I hauled from home. Said the pit was too wet. We've been getting a lot of rain. They got some beautiful topsoil here. Oh my goodness. That is some nice stuff right there. Maybe 
I'll buy some for Redfield because I'm not too far from Redfield either. I can haul some of this up there. Pulling into the job with my stone. Looks like Chris and Mike are already here. Stripping forms, perfect. I'm gonna back in there to the pile of stone that I already started to make. stone. Alright guys, I just dumped another load of stone. That's what she's looking like. Looking nice. Looking wicked nice. That's packing good, that, that like stone. Really good. Yeah, it looks like it tightened right up. It's going to be so nice. Biscuit's just using the excavator. Show them how you're doing it, Biscuit. Using the Brentwoods. It's only 11 o'clock. You guys got it fucking about half done. Yeah, you got it half done. Yeah, you're the muscles. You and Chris, the muscles. Look at that. That's how we do it, huh? What takes two scoops? No, just doing. Oh, just one small barrels. That's how they're doing it. Yeah, yeah, we gotta. What would we do without our Brentwood wheelbarrows? We would be lost. I know. We were gonna we were gonna bring the dingo over but we would have had to make a ramp to get in here and we're like, you know what, we'll put the stone there. It just goes nice with the Brentwoods. Makes it so nice. That's, that's how we do it guys. I gotta go get more stone. It's 
got back with another load. Boys are still rock and rolling over here. It's looking real good. The ICF blocks didn't come yet? No. It's a lot of stone in there, man. That's what a load from Clifford looks like. Decent size load. Hey Chris, you gotta tape my Dragon News. This is where we're at guys it's like noon we got uh all the stone in the inside except the, maybe a couple loads right there a couple scoops we got uh the marify paper we put that cloth paper down underneath this stone to keep the clay from punching up so we got that in um, we put some stone down underneath the pipe and there's the pipe. We don't use that black crap pipe. We use the good stuff. Good with the, um, it's got the coupler molded onto it. Real good pipe, that's what we use. There's our paper. We put the paper, like I said, down on the clay. Just to keep that stone clean. And I keep hauling stone over here because we're eating it up, but everything's going pretty good. Our blocks are here, our fox blocks are here trucks out right out here in the road um, he's got a forklift thing he's gonna start unloading that so we're in good shape I'm gonna go get another load of stone when I come back we are going to uh, start putting our fox blocks down pretty soon we're gonna snap lines on the footer and we're just gonna spray foam our fox blocks down to our footer and then we're gonna put our wire mesh our poly down and that's gonna be ready for concrete placement tomorrow morning. So when we hit this corner, we're gonna tee. That's why that tee's sitting there. We're gonna tee and run right out through here with a solid pipe. Right now we got uh, perforated around here. We're gonna run solid out to there and it all drops out, it drops down here. I kinda almost got stuck in there yesterday digging this out. Is it but it drops down good, so everything's gonna be nicely out of the water table. So we kept this building pretty high because we didn't wanna get down below this because we'd be right in the water table. We wanna be able to, it to drain naturally. So that's how we did it. And there's our Fox blocks being unloaded right there. So that's a good thing. I gotta pay the man for them. And, uh, I'm gonna head and get another load of stone. 3.30, we got everything, uh, pipes all in. Everything is uh, getting cleaned up so we can lay it out for our ICF. And uh, all the fox blocks are over there, so everything's coming out good. I got um, another load of stone there I'm backing up. I'm gonna get one more load of stone. Everything is going real good today. It's only 3.30, so we got a couple, maybe an hour or two left of work to get this done. And uh, we'll be ready for concrete in the morning tomorrow. I gotta get this stone dumped and get that last load. Okay guys, we are ready to set blocks. Let the fun begin. We snapped our lines, we got everything squared up by measuring our diagonals. Oh, I forgot to mention our rebar caps. Nice Miller safety Light caps. safety caps. We got our safety caps for you safety monitors, YouTube safety monitors. We're staying safe out here. And no, we did not drink these beers. These were empties. Not on the job site. Not on the job. Yeah, we did drink these beers, but not on the job site. We brought these from home. We did not drink while we work. We have safety meetings at the end of the day. That's what we do. Yeah, safety, meetings to talk about. safety meetings, and that's where we have our cold ones. Uh, All right, so. Okay. 
We're gonna clip these corners together. Uh, we're gonna clip the whole first row together. Actually, we got some Nerdura clips that we're gonna use because uh, we have a ton of them and they actually do work. We only have a small box. Yeah, we have a whole bunch of them. So we're gonna use them even though we're running Fox. Inside and out. I'll show you. Show them, yeah. You can show the camera. Oh, real good. I like that. That's how not to do it. Camera shape. Actually, them Nerdura ones work pretty darn good. Oh, I see. Snap them upside down, like that. Outside. Bottom, inside, and out. Yeah. Got everything. Yep. Because the bottom's where you're going to have the most pressure mm -hmm. when you pour concrete. You want to make sure you clip, the, clip them real good on the bottom. Just like of that. Four clips per seam. We're going to do every single seam on this first course. And then we are going to spray foam underneath. We're going to give it a zap of spray foam on our line, and that's going to keep our block right where we want it. Everybody thinks it's going to move. Once that spray foam dries, it does not move. And then we are going to pour a floor. I actually mark, like so. these Nadura clips better than the Fox ones. Do you? I think they're easier they work, to put on. They work wicked good on these. I didn't think they would work on them, but heck. Sorry, uh, Fox, we like Nadura clips better. I actually like Nadura blocks better, but I don't know. This, we have a, um, cause we're pretty close to the drop that sells these blocks, so I figured we would use them. Well, that one's gonna have to be bent back. Yeah. Sometimes the bar will hit and you just bend it out of the way. It's like of that. Florida again. <laughs> we could have laid uh, all these concrete blocks on this one if I didn't talk to the homeowner. I actually sold the homeowner on the idea of doing ICF on this crawl space because it, it does a lot of things for you. It, you gotta uh, talk someone into doing a full house. That would be a fun project. A full house? That'd be wicked cool. I've done it. I got the book on it. How to do all your rebar schedules and all that. Yeah, Biscuit went to class for Nadura. Concrete College. Yeah, Concrete College. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't have a, any kind of funky common seam because uh, this is 32 feet long. So being 32 feet long, it should be even even blocks we're talking. You have to bend that one rebar towards you. Pull it right towards you. Yep, you there you go. Yes, sir. Just like that. Oh, they are going to need staggered corners. Yep. Well, try the try the other one. You got to put your corner in first. Come on now. You got to send you back to college. <laughs> back to, you got to go to Fox Block College. <laughs> Biscuits got to go to Fox Block College. <laughs> yeah, it's going to have a piece in it no matter what, but the piece should be even, even Steven. It shouldn't be uh, anything weird being 32 feet. It should come out even, I hope. It should, be, it should be on a cut line. Let's put it that way. But let's see if we put it over here. Yeah, it's going to be right on that center cut. Oh. Yeah, so not, not a center cut, but right on that edge cut right there. Well, that's if this is it. It's got to be in that end right where it's got to be. Uh, yeah, to... That directly on the line down there. Yeah, we might have to shift the whole thing that way. Hopefully, it's got to go that way a little. Yeah, go to you. Oh, does it? Oh, right it makes it a little worse, actually. It's not really on a line, but that's all right. To cut it off off that line. That means we'll need to plywood plate it. Well, we didn't bring up any plywood plates. Well, we can put some on tomorrow. We can use a spreader board actually. That's all we gotta do. See how it's off the line a little bit. But it's all right. We'll cut that. And you're right on your marks on your corner marks. Right on our line. Yeah. Okay. 
we'll just have to uh, put some spreader boards or something across that because it's going to be a kind of like a common seam. Want to put a line on there? Just going to eyeball her. Just, just going to eyeball her. Here. I'm just doing about a little blast like that. A couple of feet. And trust me, it doesn't move. Some people want to tell you to spray foam the whole bottom. You can if you want. We do it this way and it don't move. So I never had it move and I've done it a ton of times. So that's the way I'm gonna keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Because it works. And I don't use a ton of foam. But I had some dude on YouTube telling me I was doing it wrong. I should put a continuous bead on there because that's what the manufacturer says. I said, well, why are you watching my videos then? If you already know how to do it. If you do it your way, I'll do it my way. Hmm? You drink Bud Light, I drink Miller Light. No big deal. We can get along. I don't see any Bud Lights on here though. Uh, just Miller. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, guys. You Bud Light drinkers. We'll still be friends. All right. That's enough of the spray foam, guys. Right? It's just that simple, you know what I mean? A caveman could do it. Just gotta make sure you're on your line. Your chalk line. Just give her a little zap every couple feet. And uh, try not to get this crap all over you. And that's that. And let me tell you, in about a half hour, you ain't moving that. I mean, you could if you really wanted to, but it, it doesn't want to move. The boys are building the Bilco door over there. This took us like a half hour, maybe. <laughs> Life is good. Just finishing up, guys. We got our poly down. We got our wire mesh down. You knew what I meant. Can you guys pull that poly that way? It's like folded here and it's short over there some reason. I don't know what happened. I'm not sure what happened <laughs> you got plenty of room over here. You got like, keep going, keep going. Yep. I mean, you got, if you're good, you got room over here to fold it back. It's like fold it over. Yeah, you got it. I think you got it. I just had to move the plastic a little bit. But everything's spray foam down. Stuff is rock solid. Spray foam's, you know, cut not 100% cured, but it's only been down like a half an hour. But this didn't take us very long. It's like 4:30, I think. We're about ready. Or what's another word for 4:30? Beer 30. Just about time to go. And we will be back here tomorrow morning, about 7:30, and we're gonna pour some concrete at eight. We had a good couple days. This is two days in right here from when we started digging. Two days in. Come on, biscuit. Beep, beep, beep. Edit, edit, edit. Ro, you going with dad today? Ro hasn't been with me all week. Mom's been home all week on vacation, so Ro has not been with dad. But today we're going to Redfield, aren't we? We're taking row today. We're going to Redfield, and we're going to pour some concrete. we got to pour out some concrete today on this uh, little crawl space that we're doing. So we're going to do that. And this little ICF job that we're doing. And then we'll bring, I want to bring three loads of stone to Redfield, so that's going to be fun. We're going to have fun today. We're going to do that. It's, uh, it's Friday. It's a good Friday. Good day to be Friday, huh? 
And we're going to spend the weekend in Redfield, aren't we, bub? He's ready to rip, I think. I'm just doing my morning uh, YouTube stuff. It's 6 o'clock. I've been up since 4. Couldn't sleep. They're doing their morning routine. Aren't you, boys? Fight play. Fight playing. <laughs> Careful. Oh, teddy bear's tougher than you, bro. Teddy bear's tough. Bro, you okay? Did he, whoop, did he whoop up on you? Teddy bear. You're a tough little guy, aren't you? Teddy bear's a tough little guy. I know, you're crazy, man. Don't let him punk you, bro. Don't let him punk you. Don't let him punk you. You little crapper. Come on, bro. You coming with dad? Teddy's staying with mom. Come on, bro. You want to go pour some concrete with dad? Teddy, you got to stay home with mom. Mom's off this week. No, Teddy. No. Go, bro. He's off. There goes, bro. Bye, Teddy Bear. No, no, you stay home with mom, okay? I know, buddy. He doesn't like being in a car, does he? Come on, Ro. Get in the truck, buddy. Come on, Ro. Bye, Teddy. Bye, Teddy Bear. Come on, Ro. Let's go, bud. We gotta get in the dump truck. Taking the dump truck this morning. We're gonna go pour some concrete today, guys, and then we're gonna run to Redfield with some stone. Come on, Ro! Let's go! I don't even know where he went. Get in the truck! Come on! Let's go! Hit the dump truck, my man! Come on, get up in there! Get up in there! We gotta go! We gotta go, buddy! We gotta get that concrete poured out. There's your lunch. There's your lunch. You ready? He's ready. He's got his game face on. Let's go, buddy. You ready? You can't have nothing nice with bro. Look how muddy his feet are. Come on, buddy. What'd you do? Run right through the mud? You are out in the woods, weren't you? All right, we're in Clifford the Red Dog. We got to head to the job. We're going to grab some stone first. And then we're going to head over to the job. And uh, we got to pour some concrete first. Like I said, and then we're gonna make a, some runs to Redfield. You slide over, mister. You're all dirty. Look at you. You're a hot mess, kid. So, uh, cool this morning. Window's a little fogged up. Well, guys, I'm heading to the job. I was gonna go get some stone. Something's going on with my brakes. Um, I don't know if I blew a brake line or what, but I'm gonna just head to the concrete job because uh, where we're gonna pour. I was gonna get the stone first and bring a load of stone over, but I got, my brakes are not working right. Something's going on, so I'm gonna get down here and uh, look under the truck and see if I got a brake line out or something. I still got brakes, but they're not uh, working right at all. The, the pedal's going right down to the floor so I'm gonna sneak up here and uh, where we're gonna pour concrete and look at the brakes and see if I can show you what's going on there yeah I got nothing Oh yeah, look at the smoke going on. That's 
sad chicken. Oh, I don't know what's going on there, but it ain't good. There's brake fluid all over the place. Not good. There's brake fluid sprayed right up, all the way up here. It's done on a mud flat. Oh, poor Clifford. My old buddy Clifford. Clifford, we ain't getting any stone today, bud. Oh, look at this. Not good. Yeah, yeah. Let's get under here and look. Oh, Jesus. This is not going to be easy to fix either, guys, out here at the job where there's, I really got no tools today. But, this is what it is. Friday. On a Friday. Not going to be fun, but we'll have to fix that somehow. I think I blew a caliper, honestly. That's what I think is going on. Not good. But here's the job, guys. We're going to pour this out this morning. I was going to get three loads of stone up the red field. I'm glad it blew when there was no, no load on it. That's uh, the only good thing. Look at it smoke. <laughs> oh, boy. She is just rolling, rolling coal, baby. We're going to pour this out. Nice little. This is 32 by 32, guys. Obviously, it's going to be ICF. Um, we like to pour the floors on these before we build the walls just because um, if you get your walls up the sun will reflect off that white foam and especially when you're doing a full basement if you have a full basement up here and the sun shining this way there'll be a shade line right here where the wall blocks it and then over here it, the sun will hit the foam reflect off and that edge will just burn right in so you'll be over here the concrete will be hard as a rock and you get over here and you can't even finish it depending on where the sun is or here or here it depends on the sun but one side of your floor will be completely crispy toasty burnt right in the edges will be done and then your other side will be all shady where you can't even put a finish on it so we've learned um, the best way when we do these icfs this is just a short stem wall it's only three courses high not a stem wall, it's a crawl space. But we found that um, pouring the floor now is the way to go, for sure. Definitely the way to go. Get your floor in, and then build your walls. So, tip of the day. And uh, people say that spray foam doesn't hold. I mean, I've had people tell me that, how does the block stay when you pour the floor? Well, he zapped it with that spray foam, like I showed you. I mean, that is rock solid. It does not move. I'm pulling, pulling it wicked hard. It's so locked in there, guys. And that four inch floor doesn't put any pressure on this wall. But even if it did, I mean, this is rock solid. This does not move. I had one guy tell me, you're supposed to put a continuous bead underneath there per the manufacturer, blah, blah, blah. Evidently he knows more than me. But um, why, would, why would you do that if this works? Just like that, about every two feet, I zapped it down through there. Everything's tight, nothing's moving. There's our perimeter drain coming out. Oh, here's some birds, don't you, buddy? Here's our perimeter drain. Probably gonna run a little, another stick of pipe to get them out there, but you can see the level that we made this. We don't wanna go any deeper because we wanna have gravity pulling water down this low spot, so. We're gonna fill this in. It looks like it's not really below frost that far, but once we build our walls, three courses, and we backfill way up here, we're gonna pitch all the subgrade around it and we will be uh, below frost, because you got 10, 10 inches down here. 
too, a footer. <laughs> Look at Ro. What do you think, Bob? Is there a bird in there? You hear the bird? You hear the bird, buddy? Get him. Get the bird. Where is he? Where's the bird, buddy? He's going nuts. Get him, Bob. Get him. Oh, Clifford's still smoking. You can see. Oh, yeah. You can see that in the video. Oh, yeah. Clifford's still smoking. I don't know if that caliper's just super hot or what. But obviously, we lost some, some brake fluid. There's really nothing anymore. There's no more dripping here. Must have lost, lost it all. Not a good day. Not a good day at all. One good thing is I had the tires changed, so it shouldn't be too hard to get them lug nuts off of there and get our uh, get this thing apart maybe today sometime. We'll see. We are snapping some lines around this thing. We just set our height with the laser. We got little marks there, little nice pink marks. And uh, we're snapping a green green line on there at four inches. So our floor is four inches thick. We do have wire mesh in here. We tied all the wire mesh together with these little ties. We like to do that because uh, that just makes the wire, when you're pulling it up, it kind of keeps it all together and you don't end up spinning the wire if you're wheeling on it. It doesn't move the wire or, you know, obviously we're not driving on it today, but when you're driving on, um, when you're driving on the floor with a concrete truck, the wire will get all wadded up. So we always tie our wire together, to make a long story short. Those are just those little rebar ties. We always have a ton of them on hand. So just getting our line snapped. Um, we are gonna wheel this bad boy. Boys are getting the wheelbarrows in here. Got two Brentwoods today. So that'll be good. We wheeled the footer as you've probably seen in the video. So no big deal. We wheel all these floors. It's gonna be a nice day today. It's gonna be like in the low 70s. So it's gonna be good. We'll get this bad boy done and uh, see what we can do with old Clifford. I might try to uh, like clog that brake line off. I believe it's the caliper. I blew a caliper. So I think maybe I can cap that line and limp it, limp it somewhere to get fixed. So that's, that's the game plan. But we'll get the floor in and we'll see what we can do with Clifford. I got a place I'll take it. Hopefully I'll have to call them. But we gotta get this done first. Hmm. Here comes the mud on a Friday. Having a rough morning. Ooh, a brake caliper. Leaked all my fluid out. Looks like Big Robbie. Drive right in, Big Robbie. Show him that rock, Chris. He's gonna have to miss that one stone right there. There's a big rock right here that's a pain in our butt. We should have moved that rock with the excavators. Oh, okay. Just make sure he doesn't hit it. He's gonna have to swing wide. Big Robbie in the house. Circle T, baby. 315-963-2231, if you don't know their number. We are in New York State, Central New York State. We are in a town called Albion which is near Pulaski, New York. We're not far from Richland. That's where we're working today. We're kind of on a, um, like a dead end road that's got a snow or snowmobile and uh, ATV trail on it. And C Circle T is helping us out. We're probably 40 minutes from the plant. Big Rubber in the house on a Friday. Smile, buddy, smile. We're gonna throw all the shoots on him. We're gonna blow that bad boy in. We're thinking like a five and a half to six lump today. Get it in. Okay guys, we're gonna pull Big Robbie into this corner here. And we're gonna start wheeling and we're gonna wheel back to here. Just start filling in. We're gonna put um, a wet screed down the middle. You've seen we got our lines around the edges. 
we also rod check them edges you know we, we'll float to that um, we'll float a couple spots with the laser and then we'll pull our uh, screed this way so that we make sure the edges are nice and flat versus just kind of eyeballing to the string line we always double check them you'll see that as we go i'm gonna have to put you on a time lapse i don't really have um, enough guys to mess around too much today and that sun's right there so we want to get it in as quick as we can so i got a nice dirt pile here though i'll get you up way up here it's gonna be a pretty good view for you i'll set you up right here on a time lapse and then i'll touch base with you after we get uh a little bit further along Okay guys, slabs in. Didn't take us too long. That's what she looks like. We uh, were kind of short one man today. So I had to screed. Usually Mike's here, but Mike had something going on. He usually screeds with uh, Chris. So I did it today. That's why I didn't get as much video footage as normal, but you get the gist of it. You got the time-lapse video. Everything looks really good, so now we're gonna just we'll just be waiting. But the sun's up, so this should dry nice. We're not gonna get any super weird um, shadow lines like I talked about earlier. You can see a little one here. So imagine if this wall was a, a basement wall this tall, that shadow would be way out here, and that all would not even dry. And then over here, you can see the sun is just reflecting off. The white ICF, you could see the reflection line, guys. And that right there will be done way before that little black shadow line and this shade line. That's from the trees. So you, you got to think about that when you're pouring stuff. But um, if you do an ICF foundation or crawl space like this one, go ahead and uh, pour your floor like this. And uh, you can still put your bracing up. We're going to put the bracing to the outside. So but we've actually put little tap cons in the floor as long as there's no um, radiant heat in there. And then we'll uh, just fill them little tiny holes with uh, a little bit of Portland and sand and you never even see them. But that's how we do it. Always different ways to skin a cat, but I've learned that uh, this is the way I like to do these floors. We were thinking about putting the walls up and pouring the wall in the floor, but the way our schedule's going this week. We figured this would be a nice, easy Friday. We get the floor in, let it sit all weekend, 
then we're not walking all over it and uh, we'll let it harden up and we'll be in good shape for uh, Monday morning we'll stack some blocks but I'll try to show you a little bit of finishing but I am gonna be working on my dump truck trying to get that thing so I can get the heck out of here I think my buddy Daryl's gonna fix it so I gotta get it to him so we're gonna try to block that one master cylinder off somehow but I'll keep you posted on that too All right guys, this is where we're at. This side just cooking, like I told you it would. Sun's beating off that foam. That edge is still pretty soft over there in the shade. Chris has got everything broke. It's gonna not be a long day today. I'm working on uh, Clifford. I went to try to get a plug. I tried to take the line off back here. Tried to take the line off the um, out of the caliper. It's a caliper that's bad. So I'll get under here. So I tried to take this line out of the side of the caliper. And it goes in here, up here, right here. I tried to take it out of there while it broke. So that's where I'm at. I broke it, broke it off right here. I tried to flatten it. You can see how I hammered it flat. So I thought that might stop the fluid, but it didn't. So I put a pair of lace grips on it. And actually, now it works. So I think we can drive it home. We'll have brakes. We gotta put some, we bought redneck some fluid. Ingenuity. Yeah, Redneck Ingenuity. So we're gonna take some tie wire and tie wire these um, lace grips closed and try to tie them up to this leaf spring here so that I don't lose the lace grips halfway home. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay guys, there's the setup. There's the setup. Got the vice grips, clamping the hose, wired them up. Got wires going around here so that it doesn't come unclamped. And I double wired it to the leaf spring, so and I'm just gonna limp it home. Or actually limp it to my buddy Daryl's who is gonna help me out. And I ordered the caliper at Advanced Auto Parts. They said they'll have it tomorrow morning. So actually I ordered two. I'm gonna put one or Daryl's gonna put one on either side. So that's the game plan. Okay guys. I got my brake fluid. Dot three. Dot three brake fluid. We're gonna fill her up. And this is gonna be the ticket. I'm gonna get her home. You can hear Chris finishing the floor in the background. So I was gonna get some stone for Redfield, but um, which I still am. I'm going to take this to Daryl's. Biscuit's gonna follow me. And uh, I'm gonna get my black truck with my dump trailer. So that's gonna be the next move. Because Chris is gonna finish the floor. He's got no problem doing that. So that's gonna be enough fluid right there to get us to Daryl's house and like I said advanced auto parts they were great they said they could have there was two different calipers for this truck and they said they would order them both and there's like four different kinds of brake pads so they said they would order all four pairs and everything will be in tomorrow morning and today's Friday so that way Daryl will have the parts hi Bubber Daryl will have the parts and we can get this thing fixed over the weekend so we can get working on Monday because I got more stone to haul. So kudos to Advanced Auto Parts, actually. Well, it's working pretty good. We are uh, just heading down my buddy Daryl's road right now. And he's going to fix his truck this weekend. Right, Ro? It all works out pretty good because we poured Daryl's floor. Hey, quiet. We poured Daryl's floor last week and I didn't charge him anything except just the cost of the concrete and the wire mesh. Um, so he's gonna, he works on all my equipment. He's a good buddy of mine. So um, he's gonna fix my truck. Thanks, Daryl. And uh, I poured his floor. All works out pretty good. Pays to have a few talented friends. 
He's got me and I got him. He, he's good at mechanic work. So he can fix this truck for me. Right, Ro? Actually pulling in. I'll, I'll show you his floor. You might have watched the video. I haven't posted the video yet. But I will show you what his floor looks like that we did last week. You made it, Ro. You made it. You made it to Daryl's. Yeah, went pretty good. I had good pedal on the brake and everything. I just limped her along. Will you relax, mister? We're getting out here. We're getting out. Well, here's Daryl's floor. He's doing his homework. I told him to keep it wet for a week. And I come in and lo and behold, it's all soaking wet. Perfect, Daryl. You're doing good, buddy. Now Rose gonna be all wet. Please tell my uh, homeowners to keep their floors wet and it'll, it'll help it cure. It'll be a lot better job, a lot stronger. You can see it's all cut. All right, guys, Clifford's all torn apart. I just called my buddy Daryl and he is uh, working on him. But what happened is the caliper blew on the one side. so. We got some new calipers here. And uh, when the caliper went, it actually hit the rotor, messed the rotor up, but um, that's what's going on. So Daryl's got it all torn apart and we're gonna, or he's gonna get it fixed for me. So I just stopped over here to uh, see how it's going. But he tore both sides apart. Only blew the one caliper, but he tore both sides apart. And he's got to get a big wrench to get this off. Because this isn't as easy as just a pickup truck. So that rotor right there is damaged. I don't know if you can see it, but it's it's pretty scuffed up. Oh, there it is. Doesn't really show very well in the videos, but he uh, checked it out and it's definitely scuffed. When that caliper blew it pushed straight in and the piston pushed straight against the rotor there's another caliper new caliper so clifford's gonna be all set up and that's that so oh yeah we we're getting uh right now we got the rotors ordered so it seems how he tore it apart i got the calipers and then he said we we better do the rotors too so that's why he's got to tear all this more stuff off of here excuse me, to get to get to that, which is even more of a pain. And he said it did not come apart nice because uh, it's all rusted out and everything. He had to pull that shaft out of there to get to that nut. And then he's got a special wrench for that. So, and those are full of oil too. So that's what's going on with Clifford, guys. I just wanted to give you an update. And uh, can't wait to get it back. We'll see you, Clifford. Mm.